Fawson commentaries say that when we have that kind of a limud, that kind of a derivation, al-tikri, don't read it this way, but read it that way, like we just heard, bonayach, or bonayach, not just sons, but builders, both will always be true. But there are two, two levels of interpretation. There's that, the way it's read, the way it's pronounced, and our Masoret, our tradition, has passed on that both are true simultaneously. The question would be, why and what is the message that is being imparted that shalom, peace, completeness, wholeness, harmony, comes, as it were, of a fusion, of a coming together of bonayach, sons, and bonayach, builders. Stop back for a moment. Let's think about the world around us. We talk about values, we talk about children, families, even that came into question at different times in the socialist world, communist world, not that long ago here in Kibbutzim, when that alien philosophy was transferred to this holy soil, attempted to be transferred. Of course, if one looks at biology, providence, history, everything in our lives as purely circumstantial, happenstance, accidental, it's all just one big reaffirmation of the uncertainty principle. There's nothing certain. The only thing that's certain is the uncertainty is the randomness. Then what difference does it make? What difference does it make as a consequence of a biological union, this particular child happens to come from those parents? It's all accidental. It's all meaningless. In a world like that, if you take it to its logical conclusion, then you must you must confront the absurdity, the meaninglessness of it all. What difference does it make? What difference does anything make? On the other hand, if you want to attain to some sense of shalom, let's refer back to the Chidor, which I have quoted here in the past. Chidor says that Shalom, harmony, completeness, is made up of parts that are put together in a significantly meaningful manner so that, such that each part, each chilek, is a shalom unto itself. And then that chilek, that part, contributes to a greater whole, a greater completeness. So it's simultaneously a chilek, it's a part, it's only a piece. But if it's the right part in the right place, then it constitutes a sholem at that moment in that place. And that's true of our lives, the portions of our lives, childhood, adolescent years, adult years. If the goal is to be an adult, meaningful activity, being productive and creative, why are we created in this manner that we go through these 
earlier stages with all of the charm, the chen, with all of the beauty that it supplies. But so what? Nechavos Havovos teaches us the hashgocha, the providence at every phase, at every stage, that the parent not only doesn't resent the dependency of the child on the parent, but he welcomes it. And the child doesn't feel frustrated by his state of dependency. So perfectly calibrated, designed to work. There's an infancy, there's a childhood, there's an, the early years, and then there's the adult culmination. But each one has its place. And if you take note and you meet Tamidi Chachomim, you'll find that there's an extraordinary youthfulness that they have about them. Once heard from Rav Hutner, in fact, I think I heard him more than once. He would say, youth is creativity and creativity is youth. Somehow it felt right, but it wasn't until many years later that I read somebody complaining about people he had known in his own youth. This one was a sculptor, this one was a composer, this one was a poet. He met them years later. That fellow was a shopkeeper, the other one was a lawyer, this one was a clerk. What happened to all that creativity? And he said that youth in its overabundance of energy simulates creativity, but it's not necessarily a lasting creativity. Lasting creativity is something that reorganizes our perceptions of our environment and ourselves. That happens more rarely. And the simulation peters out. Virtual creativity. But real creativity is when somebody plugs into his neshama. He's not just an accident of biology. He's not just bonayach, he's bonayach. He's fitting in another dimension, another piece in the puzzle, not just of his biography, but of our people's biography, of our history as a nation. He's taking his place. He's asking that kasha. He's offering that teret. He's giving that insight. Is somehow provoking, stimulating, and creating another dimension, another perception of where we are and how to deal with the challenges of our place and our time. And so it's all the difference in the world. If it's all accidental, bonayach, then it's not bonayach. But if there's a message, tamidim harehem kibonim, tamidim, children, those in your sphere of influence, those from whom you learn, then it's hashgocha. It's providence. The Rebani Shalom has brought me together with this set of circumstances, with these players on this stage, so that we should mutually provoke, challenge, and grow from each other. Nobody I ever met exemplified that more 
then remendel zeich etzadik levracha. He lived his ideas. He translated them into a sense of excitement, enthusiasm, the passion, the humor that he brought were diffused in this room in thousands of classes here in El Tissot and around the world. And he set into motion energy of ideas Yorach Linnea points out on the former Sechtas, as Yon mentioned, that end approximately with this, with this same idea of the Sholem and the Tamri Chachomim, Malbim Sholem in the world, and Bonayach, Bonayach. Yorach Linnea points out in I believe it's also B'Shem de Gro, that it's not accidental that these former sechters, Brochus, Nausea, Yevomus, and Croesus. Brochus gives us Sholem, establishing the ideal relationship between ourself and our Creator. Tfila, prayer, recitation of blessings, that's our connection, our extension, our bringing the physical into the context of spirituality. Nausea, as I'll already say, that the nausea will often have become a nausea because he's seen the excesses of the Saita, that somebody who has allowed her life to slide into animalism, so he's going to react to the other extreme. Lack of balance. Yevomus is to promote friendship, the man achai v'reai, between myself and my fellow Jew, not like that personality that refused to be miyabim because he didn't want this child to be called on his brother's name, but he'll be concerned about his brother's eternity and continuity. And Christus is the separation of soul and body for an extraordinarily grievous and heinous sin, <coughs> the opposite of that chibu, of that connection husband and wife, man and God, friend, and my own body and soul. Bonayach. And as Chassidim say, Urei vonim livonecha, when your sons will have sons, Sholom al Yisrael then you'll attain to another level of this harmony and this completeness. Then it was evident. It's retroactively clear now that this wasn't just Bonayach, it was Bonayach. You were building, you're building the world, you're building the Rebbe Nishnam's world, you're playing your role. Remendel was eager to see Talmidim be mamid, Talmidim, Talmidim that established Talmidim. He should continue to be a Melitziosha for us, for the extended Osameach family, of course, his Mishpacha, for Klai and Everyone sitting here, one way or another, is able 
to be Makayim, that duality, that ambiguity, that it's Bonayach and Bonayach. You're children of your Rabbeim, and you have to pass whatever it is that you have learned and are learning on to your Talmidim. And somebody who just knows a bit more than another can be and is in fact a Rebbe on how he relates to what he is learning, sends a message to everybody in his environment. Hashem Yitain Ozlamo Yivorech Esamo Shalom. We need Shalom in El Yisrael, and that Shalom will be here when there is more ideal fulfillment of this perfection and this Shlemus within our own Heichel, within our own walls. Hashem Yitain that we should see Sholem and Apfelech and Chanukah.